Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Thousand Week Reich in which we're playing as a Krasnodarsk Soviet government and we have a uh, shortcut here, huh? Gurfeo faction is nothing. Sniper clique, uh, led by Zatsev and then there's a Polar National Committee, Andrei Vyshinsky. But we're going to do Russia's true son, Alone in the Cold. Broken after terrible defeat out of the Reich ran over Mother Russia, we had to resort to various methods to survive the cruel years that were to come. Fleeing from Beria's wrath, Marshal Zhukov traveled many kilometers until 1950. He arrived in a desolate Siberian desert that lacked the sun to provide hope that seemed a farther and further reality. Her only most loyal sons only believed that she that she could be saved from all difficulties that have arisen, such as the Tuvans who rebelled against us, isolation from the outside world, and the factionalization of the political scene. We are alone in the dark, without anyone's hope. Friends in this dark hour, when you lose every trace of hope and faith that anything will change, life can surprise you one way or another, making these least, least moments easier. We received a radio report that several groups of soldiers were quite close to the border, fleeing from various disgusting hands that grabbed the Union by the neck and broke as mercilessly like a beast. We have to do something about it because our, the lives of our comrades are at stake. We can't just leave them in the Siberian desert without any supplies, we have to save them. I say to the government. Uh, after the collapse of the Soviet uh, Union under the leadership of Beria, who tried to demote Grand Marshals Georgi Zukov and Konstantin Rokosovsky, Followed by the wave of supporters who rejected Beria's regime, a large number of people decided to follow in Zhukov's steps, and finally arrived in Krasnoyarsk in 1950, where Zhukov formed, the, formed Krasnoyarsk as a militaristic state. While Kolm never remained in the Union, Rokosovsky and Zdanov in Novosibirsk had a ceasefire was achieved, which created de facto areas of control, which they hold now. In the cold heart of Siberia, Zhukov always considered the idea of returning to the old Union in all of its glory, but there were factors in front of him that made the path more difficult. The Tuvan insurgents added a significant amount of damage to Zhukov's reconstitu reconstitution of forces in order to start the process of the Union's compliance. Uh, now the Union is facing a big problem of an internal nature that threatens it, and Zhukov has devised a plan to achieve that, through direct control. But will this Union last enough to fill, fulfill its aspirations? Only time will tell. Alone in the coldness of Siberia. Some time has passed since the Tuvans have decided to revolt, start a revolt against the government of Krasnoyarsk, terrorizing its territory with ruthless Kalashes with an army. Day by day, their actions in Krasnoyarsk are spiraling out of control and threatening our population while the army can do nothing about it. We sit and wait for a miracle to happen that does not come in any aspect of our lives here, but rots slowly while our enemy, whom we previously considered a friend, devours and swallows us. Kills us slowly. Are we left with more, with more solutions to the Tuvan problem? No one can give a definite answer anymore, no one even knows if there is a solution, but just endure another effing day without someone killing him. Just like when we lost a whole group of 200 soldiers who found themselves in conflict with the Tuvans. Help us if you can, because we're losing strength to endure this fight. My sweet lord, help us. Addressing the military's faction. One more little some allies. He's been doing it with, so. Uh, when you are left with no choice, you have to work with those resources that you currently have. That's what a situ situation looked like when you arrived in Krasnodarsk in 1950. Encountering polit politicians who had already settled here, as well as Tuvans who had promised us support to survive. We decided to work with them because we had no other options. But we're not going to stay with Zukov here. Serov seems like interesting. Zukov's last betrayal took an increase to Serov's resources. But we're going to go vastly expand the NKVD's budget, probably. An, an ethical choice, huh? The death of Zidana, an army of defectors. Throughout the deep snow and darkness that swallowed everything in the front of them, 20 trucks managed to deal with the relentless weather to escape from Beria and his disgusting appearance. Despair was stronger than the human ability to survive such harsh conditions, but a brave group of people managed to break through despite all the conditions. Thinking that they would never see the light of life again, a part of their army came to them, which was sent after they received an order from the command staff to save them and then take them to safety. Through delirium, uh, caused by extremely cold weather and lack of supplies, they managed to make a small smile that filled their hearts because they knew they no longer had to worry salvation came. Helping them settle down, they headed together to Krasnoyarsk, where the new future was waiting for everything. Maybe not the most beautiful one, but it was certainly better than having Beria determine how long they'll live. Refugees from Beria's wasteland, and the death of Zedandov. Marshal Zukov sat pensively in his chair, uh, looking at the wall with the map of the Soviet Union from 1939. It gave him the sentimentality he needed during the day when he felt a heavy stone in his heart because of the disappearance of his country for which he fought, which he loved, and then lost again. Suddenly, he heard the energetic pounding of a fist at the door to turn around and say, You are free to enter. We did not pull up barricades almost. Then a soldier rushed inside. Zukov did not know who he was. I apologize for coming in like this. They just told me to hurry when delivering your di this dispatch. The soldier told him, handing him the letter that just arrived. What is it about? I don't know, Marshal. I was just told to bring you this letter. Thank you, and you are free, Zukov told him as a soldier left the office. Then he noticed the title of this letter, which brought him a sadness in his heart that he did not feel before. This news was wonderful. This news brought something he certainly did not expect and something he thought would never happen. Drinking aneurysm, drunken booty, uh, Zukov shouted after banging uh, his fist on the table with pleasure to continue reading the letter, which brought more and more beautiful news. Zidanev died. He was no longer alive, and that filled Zukov's aged heart with joy and the will to live that he had not felt before. I finally waited for you to get to know the ugly set of alcohol, you filthy creature. Then he set it down on the table and went in the direction of the window to breathe some fresh air. Sitting by the window, he saw the hope would he would get uh, some, new, some new news, something that would further improve this hopeless situation before 
Uh, because when hope runs out on the other front, your front gets better from that point of view. And as the uh, Zukov was, first front and Zidanov on the other. Take this shot, you drunk crapper. Ugh. Ivanov's little NKVD. Serov has various abilities. They give you great importance to us in establishing control in Krasnoyarsk. From ordinary peasant to politicians or terrorists from the Tuvan ranks. What we need now, more precisely, what is Van Serov and his uh, needs is his toy, which you'll play in our favor, eliminating all threats uh, that appear in front of our path. Le could lead to consequences later. Huh. And after the betrayal, as Marshal Zukov sat alone in his office, leaning over the table, wondering what he had to do next because he was left without allies day by day, slowly losing their support. The memory rushed through his head that could not leave him, refusing to believe that he had extended a hand of friendship to the two events who built a new future together. Only to eventually turn against him as if they were blood enemies they needed, cut off from the neck as relentlessly as possible. He put his notebook uh, down his notebook. Looking up to the windows, he heard new shots just open a few miles, just a few miles from his residence. When will this end? More. Zukov said quietly and desperately, looking at the new lives to be lost in the settlers' struggles with each other instead of turning all resources towards rebuilding the state and seizing Berio. This is how it should happen. It seems that I will never see the unification of Russia ever again. Hide the pain, Marshal. Hide the pain. Nation is stable. I'll slow oh, birth. I'll tie. Well, I don't really want to increase uh, Zukov's control, but it's only slightly. Amnesty talks. Because when we go through here, I kind of want to go this way. So we'll see. Um, that's increase the budget, huh? Well, maybe we'll go with this one instead. Token increases to Serov's resources. Must not allow Serov to have too many places for rest and independent activities in Krasnoyarsk, because that can hit us hard on the head if we allow it. Therefore, we have decided to make a slight connection or combination between the autonomy of activities and a mediocre budget, which in the long run will be a far greater benefit than expending everything we know now or everything we have right now. Only time will put us. Will help us to put an end to the Tuvan crisis, as it befits human morality that has run out of, since the Soviet Union fell into disrepair. The fire was sure dread. Oh boy. Oh, you're not bad. You're not great, but not bad. <coughs> Composed about 100 men. Uh, the Tuvans looked in the direction of a military base that was fast asleep, except for a few guards that were posted to the guard of entrance. They were divided into several groups so that they could invade from all sides until the Red Army guards had no basic doubts about what might happen. Less than 10 minutes passed when the burst woke everyone up uh, and present inside the military base and caught them in a raid. The battle, battle didn't happen. Only occasional shots paralyzed the guard, which is a very interesting way for a person to say that they were killed in the first strike. The Tuvans made their way to the barracks where the confused and surprised soldiers found themselves, where they met another department of weapons. The Tuvans occupied this base in just half an hour from the initial attack as they took care to secure the positions, preparing everything they had as equipment for pyromania. The Tuvans distributed fuel around the base, carefully measuring that everything would catch fire. And then the fireworks happened, throwing a small flaming spark that came in contact with the gasoline, the fire began to spread to the military base, swallowing everything in front of it, and reaching the room with explosives, and there was a huge explosion that took everything with it, drawing in everything and throwing it around. Marshal Zukov talked on the phone with Kostogin about some basic things within the government, to hear someone knocking on the door. Who knows how many times? You are free to enter, Zukov said. Continue to talk to Kosijim. Valor set the letter down on the table, following Zukov's hand, pointing to the table, which he did. Valor then went outside as Zukov picked up the letter, reading it while talking to Kosijim. It was with deep regret that we must inform the marshals that we have had an accident at a local military base. According to the basic evidence we were able to find, we have reasonable suspicions that the Tuvans took part in this action, which took the lives of our soldiers who found themselves in a military base that suffered enormous damage in the explosion that allegedly followed the battle. He didn't even manage to read the letter until the end, when he threw the telephone receiver against the wall out of rage, remembering all the previous incidents he had with the Tuvans, and how they had to fight them even when that fight was in vain. Kosijin looked confusedly at the phone of the other end of the uh, phone. Not knowing what had just happened, Zukov got angry from his chair and looked around the office with a tired look. When will this fighting or when will this stop happening? Ujin thought. A little NKBD. Okay, not bad. Ivan Serov. Because right now we are socialists. Token increases. Ah, Serov's NKBD. Ivan Serov was accompanied by two guards who led him through the corridors of Zukov's residence. At first, he didn't know why he was invited to come here, but he started to accept the invitation. He didn't speak. He just walked past the guards until they reached the office door. The guards knocked to hear Zukov's voice say softly, Forward. The guards had opened the door and let Serov in, closing it behind him. Good afternoon, Marshal. Whom, to whom should I thank for this uh, indication of him? Serov spoke as Zukov finished something in his notebook to turn to him. Would you thank me for being here on my initiative? Then how am I supposed to understand this if I may know? You know very well what kind of service I need from you. Zervas made a short smile, but he didn't reveal himself too much because he did not want Zukov to notice his happiness in it. You need the secret police, am I right? As hard as it was for me to say one way or another, yes, that's exactly what I need. But on one condition, speak. I know that you marshals will keep everything in your hands, but I want at least a little uh, kind of autonomy so that I can do my job smoothly. To allow himself to be threatened by the Tuvan threat and Christian Norris can't accept this. Then, then, I think we have agreed on this. Thank you for your trust, Marshal. I think that trust will cost me dearly at the end of the day. Setting the NKVD's legal limits. 
What it separates us from the leaders of the East and the West is a fact. There was no humanity in our hearts, if not for the formation of the NKPD, then at least for the actions of the territory of Krasnoyarsk. To stand on the way of the Tuvan threat, we have to give them a little space to think that we are doing nothing more than just pump, jump them like a snake to its prey out of nowhere and tear it apart with strong blows on the concrete. To prevent Tuvans from knowing what we are doing, we will organize a political act in which all inhumane methods proposed by Ivan Serov will be condemned to this end this crisis as soon as possible. Oh, the Tuvans. Uh, are we done building? I think we were done building, but okay. Maybe we were building the entire time. Whoops. Oh, well. Promises of peace. Now we're good. A slow burn through the Altai. Over time, our methods have become increasingly effective in resolving this crisis. Through a series of minor battles with Tuvan rebels, we managed to capture several of their soldiers and forget about them, which led to reports from the Altai region that the rebellion was losing more and more support among the mo locals. It's a perfect opportunity for us to force one of the prisoners in the secret escort of our army soldiers to convince their leaders that it's time to stop the rebellion and stop losing more and more soldiers who do not have reserves nor the people who support them in recruitment. Beautiful. Beautiful. We get almost nothing here. So with the little NKVD, we have the Tuvan insurgency, which is really bad. Should we the situation not be resolved, uh, we risk total state collapse, which is very, very bad for us. The Red Army political factionalization, or factionalism, not good. The Red Marshals Red Army is pretty nice. Olympic Army is not great, but not bad. And members of the Second Union is bad too. The NKVD in Crest North is in a weird state of limbo, where their counterparts in Perm be corrupted. The NKVD must reform, and these reforms are made to be serving to serve our regime. New court system? Stability and war support. Can we cancel this? No, we cannot. I don't think we can get anybody here or anything. Screw it. We want more stability. Amnesty stock to the Tuvans. We face success. Oh, our fight against the Tuvan revolt has finally come to an end. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief with a uh, sign of eternal peace. Our biggest enemy is uh, domestic politics. Terrorism has finally come to an end. Negotiations begin with the Tuvan rebels, and which we hope we will be able to end, if not quickly, then for sure. Well, we'll see. We'll lie in the Tuvan insurgency national spirit. Ah, gotta love the coffee that we have with us. Keeps nice and warm on these cold Siberian days. A beleaguered envoy. The vehicle stopped in front of Von uh, Zuka's residence. There was a Tuvan in who arrived uh, by order of the Tuvan command headquarters to find some negotiations on a truce between the Red Army in Krasnoyarsk and the Tuvan revolt, which suffered more and more defeats as time went on. Just from he stopped across the entrance of the residence to be immediately greeted in the hallway by Marshal Zukov. Urging out to greet him warmly, they headed for his office. Marshal, I'm glad to see you as much as you think of me. The only thing I'm glad about in the situation is that you finally agreed to negotiations, Zukov said briefly. And then with a pause to the Tuvan, the delegate agreed with him. You're right, Marshal, I'd just like to talk about it if you don't mind. That's no problem. Feel free to say what you want. Six hours passed in this conversation. And when Zukov's proposal to start negotiations that would end the Tuvan revolt was finally accepted. Peace was always an option. Addressing military factions. One of our biggest enemies in Krasnoyarsk is politics in itself because we're facing factionalism of unprecedented proportions. We're trying to drag us to the bottom of the ocean into oblivion. We must keep our state in harmonious unity because if we cannot control ourselves, then who will be able to? We will pay attention to the problems caused by factionalism by opening up negotiations with the factions that are the main actors of the political scene, while at the same time we will deal with the propaganda that will serve us well. The unity of the state and its independence depends on it. Yeah, that'd be really good to do. So just drift for a while. That's fine. Ten days left. And the Tuvans will agree to peace because if they don't, well, they're probably all going to die. And as with me, that's okay they all die. That's totally okay. Tuvans agreed to peace. In one of the larger halls of the capital of Krasnoyarsk, the Tuvan rebels gathered who led the revolt all this time with Zukov's people. The meeting passed without any incidents on both sides, and what was required to be fulfilled to achieve final peace and not pose any problem for Zukov. Agreeing to Tuvan's conditions to provide amnesty and unhindered residence to all troops, as well as a membership in the ICPS as a Tuvan section, Zukov and the rebels finally put their signatures on the paper and thus ended this bloody fairy tale that took many lives for nothing. Peace of mind, peace of the body for eternal uh, peace. So I think control. Nice. Traditional socialists. Snapper think will be favored. Ooh. Ooh. The Red Army protected by God. But by the Red Army's diversity. Hmm. I, I really don't care which one we choose. Prostitution, he's a socialist. Total control? Undecided. <coughs> um, singular idea of Soviet ban. Or the Plural National Committee. 
made of Polish communists. I kind of go with Zetsiev. Sniper clique. Zetsiev's traditional socialists. The factionalization is a big problem that we have to fight resolutely with. The fact is that we cannot stop them more easily by banning or using similar methods, but we can uh, keep them under control if we choose um, carefully. Traditionals are full of different ideas that they have managed to combine into one ideology, but it's a combination that, effect that effective when it is created that way. We must not ask too many questions because we must save Russia. But Zatsev might be maybe our sure win because we are afraid that we are only at a loss with others. Yay, better guns. Our traditional unification plan. During being behind the members of the Sniper League, Zatsev has handed us a plan that considered perhaps the only solution to the chaos in Krasnoyarsk. This plan proposed to put an end to the opposition party of social democrats, i.e. plural nationalists, to achieve an end to factionalization, or factionalism, which is destroying the country day by day, month by month, and without any sign that it will ever get better. If this is the only choice we have, we simply have no choice but to take it to that paper and sign it. Contacting our spores and Nova Spears? Although we're alone in this desert full of ice that has no end, we can rely on a few, if not only the one of our friends who is currently Nova Spears. We have certain contacts that can lead us to a certain help that can fulfill our spaces and empty warehouses that are so eagerly waiting to have weapons in them that will be there to use in a just fight for Mother Russia. Traditional Socialists. Do you anything here? No. Uh, after shaking hands with Zukov, Zatsiev left the office after a successful meeting aimed at co-signing cooperation between the two sides. He went out with his friend while they were talking about how this agreement would bring significant benefits to Krasnoyarsk and Russia so that the topic of conversation would move to the other side. It's been a long time since we agreed on something, hasn't it? Was that CS spoke as his friend nodded? When did they come, uh, it was two years ago? Yes, yeah, like yesterday, when I, was, when I remember that. Almost like time flew by in this icy desert. I agree with you, it's just a little weird for me remembering all that, you know. How does it down to kick us out? Exactly, I dream of those, uh, cold nights when we were dying of cold and hunger just to get somewhere where we can be our own, where we may calm down and create something that will last. May I tell you my honest opinion about that? Sure. I think we just found it. I think it's already here, we just need to accept this and keep going. Uh, maybe you're right, my friend, maybe you're right. I've gone down to the crossroads, fell on my knees to find a better future. Nice. How many here we really want? Construction speed is not bad, 50%, but I prefer having more cities if possible. But that doesn't really help us out at all, does it? Okay, then. Never mind. Nice. The Red Army protected by God. The Red Army was created by God's self. Uh, everyone has been trying to deny it since its inception. Or wherever its divine origin, she has the strength and the will to oppose almost everyone who. Uh, Presents her with a problem, both one way or another. If we could indoctrinate soldiers to fight for both the motherland and God, we might be able to achieve the effect that they fight even harder than they have done so far, while providing the will and endurance to resist attacks from all sides. Not bad. I love how we get more uh, naval XP when we have no ships at all. Revolution in Bulgaria. Ba 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 Bulgaria. Oops. Prioritizing, prioritizing the infantry corps. Uh, there will never be too many soldiers in the training to succeed in our holy mission saving Russia. If we can redirect resources from our budget in the production of infantry weapons and training of a new generation of soldiers, we'll be able to regain what we lost in previous decades. All loved ones, homeland, and everything we have lived for. If we not do something about it, we'll be left without this quasi homeland in Crest Norris, which provided us with salvation for the new future ahead of us. Let's not gamble on them. That would be good. Fuck you, Imperm, huh? Nice. They probably deserved it. Keep working on that infantry. The infantry is going to be key to winning uh, the Soviet Union back. Look at this Franco, the sniper clique. Oh, that's not good. That's a division organization. Oh boy. Oh, let's get this one first. Expanding the Crest and Norris factories. Our military complex is seriously demand that attention be paid to them because they contain so much potential for further production of weapons that we simply cannot, without looking at and rearranging the complexes according to the needs of our production. To succeed in this intention, we'll manage to lift us uh, a little from our broken knees. We'll start with the expansion of the existing factories that are in our hands and are operational. That'll be our primary goal for now, of course. That'd be a good thing to do. Snap a clique, huh? Secure the most loyal generals for armies. We must look in our backyard because our closest friends and associates are the best odds in the short term of the best. Two generals stand out from everyone, and it would not be difficult to convince them to join us in our fight for a new traditional Russia that we all strive and for and that we all love. Our dearest allies. The convoys arrived one after the other while the controllers made sure that nothing was damaged during this process. The weapons were pa neatly packed in boxes, the number of which was about 20 for the weapons themselves, while one large box was reserved for the company equipment. The material they ordered arrived one after the other in the large trailers pulling it off from Novosibirsk. The truck driver came out to meet the control. Is that an order from a couple weeks ago? 
Everything is neatly packed, just to be taken to the capital and handed over to the local authorities. Can I take a look if it's not a problem? Well, of course, you don't, if you don't have any problems. The controller headed with his colleagues in the direction of the trailer entrance. After the driver opened the door, the controller went inside, checking if everything was in order and if there was any danger hidden inside those boxes. It's clean, he shouted after the inspection went smoothly. It's okay, you can move on. We understand. The driver led the convoy, replied to get back to his truck, and continued his journey to the capital. Open the gate General to the capital. Seeing it at an empty table, Ivan Sidorenko and Abzul Kazidzi uh, Idrazov uh, arrived here at the direct invitation of Zatsev, who asked him to join him in a meeting. Without explaining the details, I could lead to knowing what will be discussed here and in which direction he could be turned the meeting to. You know about this, perhaps? Idrazov just shook his head when they heard footsteps approaching. It was Zatsev who was treading with heavy footsteps. Good afternoon, gentlemen. You're probably wondering why you're here. Of course, we asked. Of course, I'd like to talk to you quickly if that's no problem. Of course. I wanted to do this. Ours. Or the Red Army needs fresh blood to lead it, and we have known you two long enough to realize that you two are the best options for me to make that choice, if you know what I mean. In translation, you want us to be generals of the Red Army? Yes. What is your answer to the question? Looking at each other, they had to agree. Our desire have conducted them through the procedure, the formalities are finally completed. Thank you for your trust and willingness, as we're doing smuggling in outdated armor. As the production continues at a slow pace, our need for further equipment continues to grow. Fill our warehouses to the top, we'll have to resort to desperate methods and try to find op obsolete pieces of armor brigades, as well as main battle tanks that are discarded at some scrap metal landfill. If we can find a few broken ones, it would be extremely helpful in understanding and adapting our armor brigades, which will come in handy as training for everyone, from mechanics to tankers. Very true. Prince of Victorious, we're just going to work on infantry a whole bunch. So after that one, we can probably do a beginning of the Great Unification War. It's time to do it. We must do something about the destroyed Soviet Union, which is sinking into increasing chaos but day by day, from which there is no return. Her army is more ready than ever, but we managed to establish stability in this country, and we solved the issue of political factionalization, which also threatened us. Now we can finally turn uh, turn to bring the Soviet Union into what it has always been meant to be, a heaven on earth with God's help. Long live Mother Russia, the Soviet Republic of Novosibirsk. Zukov, be aggressive. Uh, Big Daddy's dead. Okay. Goodbye, Big Daddy. Um, asymmetric warfare. Regular asymmetric warfare. Fighting the co fighting the war with your rules at their cost. Not bad. Uh, I always like strategic theorem though. Max attraction is pretty nice. Ground operations. Support attack. We don't really that type of stuff to really use it very effectively. It's not bad though. We don't really have a lot, a lot, a lot of tanks. We do have some tanks, but still, top stack. Uh, organization plus five only. More entrenchment, more defense. I do like I like both. Industry. You get more population here. Oh, I get more population no matter what. Supply so consumption goes down, which would be very helpful for us here. This stuff doesn't really help us. It helps us somewhat, I guess. Tactical destruction. Weekly wars for combat casualties. Exclusive. You get a lot of population on that side. Planning speed at max trench, minutes off stack. I want to go with the. I always do this one, so I'll go with that one. Ah. Beginning the Great Unification War. <coughs> and. Do we got it? Video. Integrate the compatible Politburo members. Not everyone in the old Novos Bears government directly conflicts with the Marshal's ideas. Uh, uh, for they all share mutual hatred for the corrupt government and perm. We will bring some of these more like minded individuals into our government. Which would be kind of nice, as we are getting ready to just go kaboom. Hopefully, kaboom we can do well with. These divisions honestly probably really suck, but whatever. Vasily, you having upgrades? No, that sucks. That sucks to be you, then. Slavic Revolt. Train collapses. What else is new here? Ethiopia is collapsing, too. And collapse of the Caucasus. Until we go to war as well. Oh, well, would you look at that? Now they're going to war with us, too. Okay, great. Fantastic. Fan freaking tastic. And they immediately start attacking us here. Oh. Well, alright. So be it. You want to win there? Okay, then. Go in here and up there, too. 
Oh, we have another focus we do? Oh, I guess it's one. Me with the Plural National Committee. Factionalization is a big problem that we have to fight them resolutely with our best forces, of course. Facts that we cannot stop them more easily by batting using similar methods, but we can keep them under control if we choose their side carefully. Plural Nationals under Andre Vyshinsky <coughs> Excuse me, are an option. We must accept that we want our government and politics to stop collapsing like an endless avalanche. We'll put an end to that division and turn our views towards further development until we can launch larger militaristic actions in Siberia. To then, our mainstay is Vyshinsky since Vyshinsky and the committee. Well, we'll see. We'll see how long that lasts. They should die, they should die down there too. Hold on. Bro, why can you not win down here? Get that tank back in there. Come on. And since we took that tile, we'll take even more too if we possibly can. Give me one second here. Alright, my bad. Sorry guys. There you go. Revolution. Foreman's position solidified. Rise attack defense. Losses. 2000 versus 5. <coughs> Excuse me. We could. I could, like, drive the tanks there to there. Let's look at these guys up here. That'd be great. We will need more manpower, though. They have a lot of manpower, wow. Go tank boys, go! Oh, you immediately go in here too anyways. We need the Plural National Committee. <clears throat> we shouldn't get toward the corridors in which the committee sat in his regular sessions. Seeking some sort of entertainment, he looked out of the windows occasionally and paid attention to the way the snow was falling. He paused for a moment, feeling as if he'd seen something, but he wasn't quite sure what he was looking at. Whether he was drunk or not, it seemed to be him that in the distance he could see a group of people breaking through the thick layers of snow. Tires were moving towards the goal. <coughs> Excuse me. But no one was there. Vyshinsky saw before him a hallucination that reminded him of the time when he came to Krasnoyarsk, New Yorkers, moving with all his political comrades to a pole by birth. He joined the committee to later become their leader, leading all the people who hated Beria from the bottom of their souls anywhere, only that they no longer had to suffer his terror. The road led them to the harsh landscape of the central Siberia, where they reached Nova Siberia's concrete and sparse supply, but then they laughed through the pain, briefly letting out air of his mouth to realize that Nova Siberia was full of Stalinists who were just a mile of shade of Beria. The fear of their repercussion was greater than their ability to survive the journey. They had to keep going, they had to do something to survive, they had continued their journey. Until almost dead, they reached each of the borders of Krasnoyarsk, where Marshal Zhukov received them. He woke up from his daydream and realized that he could not see anything, that, and it was just one of his solutions he had. The trauma he was going through, he could feel a little cold. He had to go somewhere to warm up. He remembered in which direction he was going, and meeting with Zhukov's people was to be held because he decided to accept his ideas as members of full fledged actors of the political scene. Now he could at least partially amuse himself with what his goal was to save Russia from the onslaught of evil, getting in tune for meeting straight and narrow. Nice. Trujillo's been overthrown. I love getting rid of Trujillo a whole bunch. Bro, you're going literally the wrong way. Keep going, keep going, we'll get him. Good. Report defense. Come on, cut, cut them off. White piece, nice. These things suck a lot. They love attacking us, though, which I do, but which I don't mind. All right, be good. You go straight for Nova Sibirsk, maybe. Move in when you can. No, you think don't go there. Oh no. Gotta come Robo, come on. Go, 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 go. A little ahead of time there, a little ahead of time. We grab some of that. And we haven't even worked at entry yet, god damn. Bruh.
Going to Altaisk? What the heck are you all doing down here? There's a war, but no one cares about it. That's just cool. Down and in, down and in. Um, Rush goes minus 15%. That's a bit more soft attack and reliability. Very nice. Get the capital. Barnall is now the capital, huh? Hey, we got him. Ooh. Beautiful. Then you great these guys? Yes, please. Since we're here, creation policies, Austin Civil War, civilian autonomy is fine. It's fine. Because these guys are not very good. These L divisions. Not worth having. Um, is up here, maybe? Or really, I guess just keep around trusting the risk. <clears throat> Attempted to relocate Lorokosovsky. Uh, uh, Konstantin Lorokosovsky was one of the Novos Bersk's finest generals, but now remains at large following the state's collapse. So, an expedition to hopefully find Lorokosovsky before it causes any serious damage to our plans. He's in hiding. He was all alone, trying to feel the cold of Siberia creep under his skin as he desperately tried to hide. Uh, the, from the people who were looking for him, who demanded to see him alive or dead as befits Zukov's regime. For several days in a row, he was on the move without any rest until he stopped to drink some water and then proceeded with light, but sure steps in the direction of anything he might call salvation. He was hungry, thirsty, and after a long journey, he had no one to help him on his journey but only a steely will to survive in whatever way he could. And then the ways were slowly disappearing. He felt that hopelessness of the situation pressed him more and more and suffocated him until he knelt for his pursuers. Feeling their hand on his neck, throwing him behind steel bars and chains, he dreamed of the freedom he could not have. He only had this current situation in which he found himself. And he did not see a possible way out of it. Rising somewhere in the middle of the night, twitching from the nightmare in which he saw the firing squad standing in front of him. Rokosovsky felt the cold sweat on his face pour over him. He looked around and he saw the darkness, only the darkness, that swallowed him in the road in front of him. And something that he kept repeating it in himself, just to survive this night. Crap. Well, he's got more manpower back. And a slightly more industry, which is nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look of solutions. Oh, costogen solution. Well, that's stupid. We have to wait. I want to do. I'm going to do costogen no matter what. Alexei Costogen has proposed a more pragmatic solution to the Rokosovsky problem. Instead of killing a talented general simply because he won't oppose us, we can send part of him and possibly even let him serve under the marshal's banner. That is stupid. Like a chance, and we're limited by our focus trees on which way it goes. Bruh. Just give us the option. It makes way more sense just to give us the option than anything else. The Med Union. Ah, I love the Germans of War. Look at this handsome guy, Strom Thurman, huh? Handsome. And where is he? Hit the road. He's escaped. The chase broke out of the patrol notice that Rokosovsky was fighting to escape his various visible fatigue. So he had to resort to more drastic measures, even those issued by the authorities to catch him alive. They opened fire in his direction, but all the bullets managed to miss their target, and Rokosovsky now to give his last atoms of strength to escape his pursuers. Just another normal day. You've already experienced this, Rokosovsky told himself. They confirmed to himself that he would be able to survive just one more night without being caught. It seemed as if the voices were getting farther and farther away, and he couldn't even hear the shots anymore. He'd run so fast he got rid of everything that had happened so far and didn't even notice it when they disappeared. <clears throat> And it's safe to say that it was so. Rokosovsky finally managed to breathe a sigh of relief he hadn't run as long since the war broke out between Krasnoyarsk and Novosibirsk. But nothing else mattered, he knew now that he was safe, and no one would be able to do anything to him. At least I can rest, he said to himself before continuing his journey, so close no matter how far. 
we got lucky. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm inviting Rokosovsky into, onto the MKPS. Despite his history, Rokosovsky is a man that may come in handy for the future of his Marshal Zukov looks outwards. In the best interest of the Soviet people, we shall bear the hatchet with Rokosovsky and invite him to join the MKPS. Merge in the former high command. When we defeated the degenerative state of Novosibirsk, we inherited their highest ranking generals as well. Not wanting to report these men to waste, we will rehabilitate them before returning them to active duty in the service of the true union. Adapting Zidanov's legacy to our needs. Zidanov was entirely wrong about some things, and Marshal Zukov is fully aware of this. By simply making a few tweaks to his doctrine, we can have a more solidified mandate going forward. Reclaiming the resources of Norilsk. The barren and reaches of Norilsk contain everything we do desperately need. No manpower and resources. We must reclaim the strategically vital region of Siberia at once. We're probably going to have a lot of supply issues, but whatever. Hey, they only get one a day, huh? That sucks. Uh, oh, we can go to... Convoy manufacturer, Swiss Revolution. Perm refining is okay. Uh, they're all heavy machinery. It's not bad. The one we currently really have is better, though. Your aircraft, light aircraft. No, it's a Beersk. Interesting. Oh, that one, though. Because we can. What about the old eagle? <clears throat> Kostigin was sitting alone in his office. He had heard. Uh, footsteps approached his office to look up from that direction, and someone knocked on the door, asking if they could enter the office. He can come in, Kostigin replied. Leaving his pen on the table because a few months, moments ago he'd been wandering around some trivial pursuits. Then Rokosovsky entered, honestly a little confused by the situation he found himself in after being beaten by a patrol, after his arrested not far from the woods, looking astonished to see Kostigin and not Zukov standing in front of him. If I may say so, are you a little confused, isn't it? Rokosovsky replied briefly, yes. Kostichin then took it out of the drawer next to it to show Rokosovsky a document that counted all MKPS members who had registered since the post-war period when the Soviet Union lost its life. What am I looking at? Something that might be in your future if you do so desire, Kostichin replied, leaning wildly into his chair looking at him. May I know a little more about this? <clears throat> the MKPS is an organization that operates and secret and consists of generals and volunteers who are willing to sacrifice their lives to achieve their final goal. With that in mind, even after the removal of Zukov from the central power, we thought that your profession, Comrade Gorokosovsky, could contribute a lot to the work and expansion of the MKS. MKPS, do you agree? Uh, Rokosovsky thought for a moment, looking first at the paper, then at Kostichin's eyes, eagerly bringing an answer. An intriguing offer, if I may say so. Would that then mean you would think you could contribute to our goal and theirs? My service will be at your service. Comrade Kostichin. Well, I guess we got him. Adapting sure Zidane's legacy. Maybe I'll call Ruin his brand, but I honestly I can think we could do a couple tweaks here and there. Change since this is something more meaningful, because it's obvious that this was written in such a drunken hand, and we can say it's one the work of our hands. Well, those are the words of one of the ministers of Zukov was sitting at his desk in the office. You think, Minister, that this is a smart idea? Because if we can combine the good sides of this idea with the good sides of our government, we'll be able to redouble our efforts. I'm not sure if that'll work, because Zukov began to think. That was a good point, though. As much as Zidane's drunken brain could come up with toxic ideas that were toxic as alcohol, Zukov had to accept this proposal because it seemed like the only way to bring the situation under control. Do it. I understand, Marshal, the minister said before leaving the office. Not so sweet surrender to these drunkards' ideas. Siberia's ours. All well, central Siberia's ours once again in no time. Our government will successfully defeat the pretenders across the motherland. Should be able to do fine here. Look off his level sucks. No, you can do lots of defense, but I don't feel like it. These guys have like no divisions, right? So it should be okay. Uh, I soft attack. I prefer soft attack. Great unification war. This is already 1954. Wow. Moderate's coup. Any guns? Could use slightly more anti-tank. Could use more a lot of things though. Go 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 go. Ah, uh, this division. Division. It's okay. It's not great. Is that two more to the mix? Nice. Go on in, everybody. Let's go to Norilsk. I know it's cold. I know it's frigid. And, oh, they actually have an, an intel advantage, huh? But they're just militia who are rapidly, literally dying right before us. And they literally died there. Okay. Well, okay. Putting over a river sucks. Yeah, that's why you never, ever, ever, ever use militia. It's so bad. They literally just all died there. So weak, garbage, not good to use. Just don't ever use them. Nice. It's a lot of political power. Pokudashev? Pokudashev. Set off. 
Nice. Cossage. And they're dead too. Amazing. Judith Honolulu, huh? Authoritarian system. I love authoritarianism. As long as I'm in power. Yeah, all I gotta do is get up to the capital, so. That's all I gotta do. Looking okay. Mongolian People's Republic. Well, they're the perm people here. Moscow Red Army's looking pretty good, though. <clears throat> These guys are led by Chuikov. <coughs> uh, division organization. It's not great for them, honestly. It's not that great. Serving Russia is not bad for them. Rapid military expansion is okay. Public discontent is good to see. Party factionalism is very good to see. Union Shambles is very good too. That's what they deserve. Uh, here. Mm, improve working conditions. You know what? Why not? It's going to hurt our consumer goods, but it gives us more stability in the end, which we do want. Krasnoyarsk. And we got him. Beautiful, my friends. So now, I'll go down here. Ah, Central Siberia Unified. At last, we've done what many felt would be impossible for a small warlord state such as ours. We brought all Central Siberia under our banner. We finally re are recognized as a force to be reckoned with, but the road ahead is even rougher. We must take on two juggernauts on both sides of us. We're going to need to take efforts to further unify our nation and against two threats. We stand against the revisionists and against imperialists. We get rid of the members of the Second Union. Nice. We remove the limping army, too, which is. Eh, that's actually really good, not good for us. But we get that attack and defense back. And we get a resource slot, too. Nice. Industrial base, handling the state. Despite the efforts of many great men during the Great Patriotic War, including Overo and Alexei Nikolaevich, the Union was unfortunately not unable to move forward eastwards, and much is now under German ownership. But that does not say that we are completely devoid of industry, no Sibirsk, and Norals, some of the most industrial cities in the motherland, and are, are under control. Most further industrial most further industrial production if fit our needs, so we may meet our two rivals who have advantage of a larger industrial base. The Marshal Speech. And uh, we will march victoriously to Moscow, which raises the flags and bayonets, which will carry Barry's head after all the disgusting deeds he committed. It will not stop there either. Moscow will be the only the first phase in our victorious steps. Norsk was only a small obstacle that imposed itself, and did not want to uh, agree peacefully. For the sake of a greater goal. The salvation of Mother Russia. I'm speaking to you as a Marshal of the Red Army and as a leader of the state. This will only be the beginning of our campaign. Today it is Norsk, tomorrow it will be Moscow, and the day after tomorrow the whole of Germany will be troubling before the song of the Red Army. The Marshal was in the climax of his speech where the people greeted him with a lot of applause and shouted, letting him know that they would be with him. <clears throat> to the very end, waving to the gathered people, Zukov returned to his office while the applause continued. He knew one thing, everything he has said so far was true, and he would not stop until he fulfills everything he promised himself and the people today. I want to see Hitler's grave burned down in Kosygin's speech. I am telling you uh, uh, this as if I were one of you, knowing that an ordinary person thinks he, when he hears, hears the word liberation of the Russian people. We have gone through many different periods in which we have seen our nation fragmented in a relentless number of pieces scattered across the Siberian wasteland, leaving what it charms to German paws. We have been given a chance, people. Now we are able to do everything that was necessary in order to restore the lost glory, honor, and respect. And Norsk is just one of the stopovers in this desolate wasteland that will serve us so that we can kickstart the war machines and embark on a campaign that will end this hopelessness in which we find ourselves. Gossagen ended his speech coldly, but again, convincingly, as if he could always speak in such a way that people listened to him attentively and remain faithful to his speech. No matter how long and short, loud or quiet, he greeted the people by waving both hands, continuing forward towards his office. And now the race with Zukov can begin, he said quietly to himself before closing the balcony window on which he had stood a few moments ago. He said that he would be back soon. Build, build, build. Um, can't really build anywhere, though. <clears throat> From the hands of the author. A few writers. <coughs> have left a deep mark in Soviet literature, both on the political spectrum of action and the artistic historical point of view when it comes to writing historical and alternate history movies. Or novels, I should say. Ivanov was a man of a special character, a calm look that emphasized a special artistic feature that surpassed everything that was created, and it disappeared under the radar as if it had never happened. The collection of works that Ivanov left behind also had its charm, and his three books, which marked his authoritarian career in the greatest res residence, tells a special story for themselves because they're an insight into the political events of a system that strives for unification, which strives for the freedom of all workers, who strive to understand history in a different way, which was not considered in the early days or which is, but not in any way that Ivanov could have done. Speaking of his collection with works, these three books must be mentioned. Without them, the minds of this author cannot be understood. 
The first book is called a Proletariat, Victory or Sacrifice, and it looks at the events the beginning of the rise of the ideology of the proletarian dictatorship. It's later a problem in the face of fascism to be defeated, but never forgotten after the war of the Reich that took the life of the Soviet Union, believing that something new will be born after the final return of order to the fallen creation. A sojourn in theory is a novel of political nature, which sheds light on the ideology that encompassed the Krasnodarsk region since Zukov's rise of power and its iteration, speaking and defending Zukov's ideal which seemed perhaps the only way for the Soviet Union to return to its wheels of glory. And finally, perhaps one of the most intriguing works that came out of his hand, an alt historical novel called Lens Reversed, which one this is one of the countless chances and asked the question, what would happen if the industrialization had arrived in Asia first making it a dominant force in Europe to continue the conversation on the topic? What would the proletarian future look like itself if everything else happened that way? Ivanov's works left their mark in Soviet and Russian literature as well as about this will, will this trace be able to influence the very development of both political and social thoughts? Such debates are left to those who understand it. And only does the disparate factions. It's not particular that our state suffers from severe ideological factionalism. Between the Plural Nationalist Committee, uh, the Senate Hyperclique, and others, we suffer from deep schisms. If we wish to survive and reunify Russia under becomes a banner, we'll need to handle the factions. If we get to piece ourselves together, if we do not, then we shall quickly buckle the moment the soldiers from the Western pretenders are worse than imperialist lapdogs cross the border. Which wouldn't be a good thing. Just for base, huh? Costages reforms. And Antonov's reforms. Not only industrial base, the matter of the industry has been pressing on for every communist government, and ours is no different. In regards to the matter, two main proposals have come up. The first is that of Alexei Antonov, who proposes to keep things similar to the Stalinist planning and rebuilding industry in a similar way to its pre war status. On the other hand, Kosygin has proposed, proposed a more technocratic reconstruction plan, focusing on high tech and light industry. Which we choose? Kosygin. Handling the state. Now that we can finally present ourselves as a serious contender to reunify Russia, we must work towards perhaps the most important matter, even more than arms of people, legitimacy. It's time to move on from a structure as a small proto-state within the chaos of Central Siberia warlord period into a genuine government, one which is not plagued by the informality that we face as warlords. Pretty much. There are two primary factions which make up the party in Krasnoyars, the sniper clique headed by the Vazatsev, as a more pragmatic force which seeks to work alongside conservative social forces such as the Orthodox Church. On the other hand, there is the uh, <coughs> Plural National Committee. Considering of several minority ethnic groups, the Plural National Committee advocates for decentralization of the Soviet Union and support for further rights of minorities. Some have suggested that we crack down on factionalism, while others have claimed that this division is just petty par party democracy work. How should we do this problem? Conformity. <coughs> Zukov's pluralism. Advice from Kalinin. Oh, more political power. 0.05%. That's interesting. <coughs> well, I like stability, though. This one's not bad. Zukov's pluralism for more political power, even though we don't really need it. Alexei Nikolaevich has proven himself to be a competent person whose proposals for reforms within the social system are likely to bring us new, to new heights. If we want to be recognized as a serious power as well as recover our long lost economy, it will be necessary for us to undertake its reforms and apply them to our nation. Planning, speed, attack, and defense. Defense organization, no matter what. But we will be attacking you no matter what. I'm going to go overwhelming force. I like the other one actually a little more, but whatever. Handling the state, the future of the government, is now in the position to be decided by us and two major factions have emerged. First is uh, Kostigin supporting a more loose policy and anti-Soviet positions. In the period of warlordism, Alexei Nikolaevich has argued many alternatives to the true form of communism have emerged, and to try to put them all down will be a fruitless endeavor. The other faction, however, argues that these revisions are nearly as dangerous as reactionaries, and must be equally dealt with who shall we side with. Down with the visionism. Advice from uh, Kostigin. Or we'll go here. Oh, that's this one. Prioritizing the civilian economy or industry. To prioritize heavy industry while our people do not even have basic amenities is foolish and will help foreign powers turn them against a rifle government. To risk, uh, prevent such things from occurring, Alexei Nikolaevich has proposed that we begin to place further emphasis on the production of that industry to improve the quality of life and make sure that our people are fully devoted to us. Zukov is pluralism. While we cannot allow reactions to be publicly discussed and be allowed to exist, pluralism within the social sphere of influence. It th or a sphere of thought is necessary. After all, it is a good and positive thing to discuss which ideas are best applicable to a current situation. Rather than just prevailing ideological strain of the nation's leader, in this way, we'll be able to realize party democracy and consensus based rule in their truest forms. Advice from Kalinin. One can deny that Kalinin's right spirit lives among us. The late premier was everything that Stalin's the despot was not, including, but not limited to, his confidence. And should serve as a sort of idea of how our government should run, be run. Stalin was a revisionist, and according to some, tended to a fascist in how we govern. He placed emphasis on Russian chauvinism. Over efforts to create an equal, non-ethnic union, Lenin, meanwhile, was a smart man, a true Marxist-Leninist, and a spirit will live on in our state. As it should.
<clears throat> oh, we already to Restore the crypt. Uh, so of course it's when our country collapsed uh, in warlordism, into warlordism, many farms were abandoned. The thought, though the Kozols suffered, they managed to survive in relatively good condition. The same unfortunately cannot be said for the Zokovans. Many are left completely behind and now fallen into part entirely in many cases. As we seek to maintain agricultural self reliance, we'll move to restore these Zokovans and create a new generation of Soviet farmers. Because why not? Oh, I guess we can only do that one, huh? So be it. Sure. We'll get that world propaganda, why not? Assassination attempt today. That sucks. Oh, we'll wait till they die. We'll start moving stuff around a little bit more. Can't use any single one of them, which sucks. Oh, uh, base strike, I guess. And to create compatible groups into the MKPS. The Florida National Committee has made us expand its role. We now have many more minorities within the borders of our nation, <clears throat> and that number will only grow as we continue to claim our lost territories. In order to ensure that no group feels particularly ostracized, we must continue to expand the community's role to cover more voices, such as Jews, Armenians, Burats, and Native Siberians. Hmm. Yeah. I guess we have three research slots now, which is really nice. <coughs> oh, let's see. Fuel game for oil, recent efficiency. Screw it, we'll also do it, why not? Oh, look at this. Well, that would be really good to do. Vicious anti-Republican purges. There's someone in our state we suspect of being aligned with an imperialist. Petty bourgeois Republican Vladivostok. According to our suspicions, we have an infestation of hidden agents, waiting for the time to strike against us when we finally stand against American imperialism on Russian soil. As we do not want such things to happen or hinder our war effort, we shall move against anyone suspected of such activities. He who draws a sword against us shall die by the sword. As they should. The rule by the consensus of many. The true principles of Marx and Lenin do not call for dictatorship of one man, but rather dictatorship of the proletariat. Workers' democracy. Though it is necessary to maintain the vanguard state, we must practice democracy within the vanguard party. Through this, we can achieve the best of both worlds, the maintenance of an authority, to keep the reactionaries down, uh, as well as rule by consistence of the Politburo. we got plenty of political power that we don't really need. The Grand Marshal Premier Zukov. Marshal Zukov is a man deserving of respect and honor more than anyone else in the nation. He saved us from Stalinism, a republican nation, and led us to victory in Central Siberia. It's a sensible thing to have him in total control as we seek to move out of this dark period in our history. And seeing him as he's already premier, there would be no significant change beyond enlarging his military role. Something he is more than capable of handling, of course. But we would do this one first. Um, more attack and defense against that country would be very, very good. Modify the social state, which would be nice too. Even though we have almost maxed out stability, we already maxed out war support, which is awesome. And then we'll do prepare for the push west. Which we lose political power, but at this point it doesn't really matter to me. We're nearing a, a monumental hour in the history as a, of our state, as we will soon be taking the fool, on the foolish pretender government in Perm, which dares to call the titles of the Soviet Union, one which we wrathfully hold. However, we must not rush horses. It is first necessary that we build up our forces and prepare to triumph in the face of fools who now sit in Perm. The kingdom will come, come tumbling down soon enough. Nice. Political power, the consumer gets, gets really bad. Attack him. Ooh, Perm, that's not bad too. I love these short focuses, and the mod moves pretty, pretty smoothly, so I love it. I love the smoothness. Uh, they're not smooth, I don't want them. That's a beautiful. Keep building yourselves up. Oh, look at that. Death of Republicanism. Beautiful. Ah, and now we can do this. Now we'll be ready for them. For realsies. Oh, nope. Good. These guys are not bad. Could be a little better though, but whatever. Got plenty of guns. <clears throat> Need more to tank, huh? Static oil experiments. Establishing fortified port positions on the border. When war comes, we must be prepared for the onslaught against us. Therefore, it's necessary to begin fortified positions where the enemy could be possible to make their way across our lands. This supposed to repel any enemy with a modicum of intelligence. As for those lacking such things, they'll be sent to the heck, just trying to cross over. Not to mention the soldiers will be shooting at them. Pretty much. Well, since we're here. Forming Azukafist sails their own perm. 
must bring up the liberation of Perm for the autocrats who hold it, but we cannot expect to do so using improved tactics. We must embed better men within the lands under their control, lying in wait for war to come. At that point, they shall come forwards and fight for us should, uh, against the pretenders who sit upon a throne of bayonets. We shall show them where the lobsters are hi hibernating. Begin saying Zookifist partisans. One day, one cannot deny that the forces of Perm are greater than ours, numerically and in terms of equipment, so therefore we cannot rely solely upon conventional warfare to defeat them. Belorussia and Bryansk are both areas we should look towards. During the Great Patriotic War, despite swiping out gun mount men behind enemy lines, they took up arms for freedom, and managed to form extensive networks which have proven disruptive to the plans of the Germans, which will take inspiration from the theories of irregular warfare. Reclaiming, reclaiming the Ural Mountains. The time has come for us to move west and liberate the lands which are valuable to the Russian nation. The Ural Mountains, the Kazakh Steppe, the northern coast, they are all critical to forming a united Russia. The time has come for us to cannibalize the pretender regime which sits atop the throne of lies and cares not for the Soviet people. For the Milan, we'll destroy the crooks and thieves. Wait, we're not going to go to war with the Russian Republic first? Bruh. I thought for sure we would get there first, but whatever. I could need mountains. Well, I guess that's what we're going to do. So, uh, I'm going to get do the rest of these focuses off screen. So, I hope you enjoy the first episode of us playing as Zukov to get to Kossigen. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, so, see you if we can actually take on the Soviet government. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.